how to become indisruptible. Specialize, connect, brand, influence. Hey everybody, Quint Lear's newhomesales.com. I'm Super excited. This is, uh, I've got one of my favorite people on the program. We we're talking about his new and exciting book, Hot Off the Press, The Mastery of Selling for New Homes. Ladies and gentlemen, man, I gotta be honest. When I got this book, I almost sent it back to him. <laughs> I, I thought it wasn't signed, but it's signed. Oh, but, good. Well, you made a lot to me, so I was happy to sign your book. Yeah, I got it autographed, and uh, here it is. So at first, when I opened it, I couldn't find it, but then he's got a nice handwritten thing. So this is very meaningful. This is going to go into my library of new home sales excellence. This is exciting. I think this is the newest industry-specific book, specific right. to yeah. this industry. And uh, so first off, just congratulations, Roland. How does it feel to finally get the book shipped, printed, yeah. in people's hands? It, it feels great. Thank you, Quinn. Yeah, I've been working on it for over four years. Uh, rewrites after rewrites. So I'm absolutely thrilled to uh, to have the book out there and people are emailing and I'm seeing it showing up on social media and it's, it's just an honor. It's very, very exciting. Well, I believe that if you want to be terrific, you got to be specific. And what I love about it is it's industry specific. It's mastery yeah. for selling new homes, not just new cars, not just right. insurance policies. Now I know you, you, you're, you're, you can consult in many, you're a multifaceted human Thank being. You. But I like that you drill down in your specific, yeah, uh, and you support the frontline new home sales people. So yeah. let's talk about the background. What, what? How did you get inspired to do this? Let's, sure. let's break it down. Well, good. As you know, I'm like you. I'm a, I'm a lifelong new home salesperson, sales manager. It's all I've ever done uh, in my whole adult life. And and I I just found that there was a void in in books and training material. Uh, and I hear it a lot that he couldn't find a book that specifically taught the sort of A to Z, the whole selling process for new homes. Not since one of our, our personal heroes, Dave Stone, wrote a book, I think back in the 60s was the last time somebody attempted to write a, an industry specific book from start to, you know, from back to front that, that outlines it. So I've always wanted to do that for people that don't get to see us in person, that want to go and buy a book and, and understand the new home sales process. So that was sort of my, my whole motivation was to write it. As you can see, it's thick, it's 400. 50 pages so it's not for the lighthearted. it is probably the most the most in-depth dive into new home sales and and you literally could buy this book and learn how to sell new homes so that that really was my motivation to get it accomplished well you know we were kind of brainstorming before you published the book you're saying quinn is this too big of a book and i said <laughs> you know, it's about too big sales people are smart sales people right. like learning and i think that if 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 you're entering into new home sales i think the big mistake that I see is that the attitude of all oh, these homes sell themselves, it's going to be easy. No, this is, you should right. be studying new home sales like you're getting a master's degree or you're getting a bachelor's degree. Um, we should put the same level of uh, expertise. Uh, man, okay, let's let's get into it. You ready? Okay, all right, I'm ready, man, yeah. All right, let's, let's hit this. Thank thing. you, I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. And by the way, as, as you're looking at pages, I want to say the title is Mastery of Selling. Uh, it, you know, it, it, but it's got every level in there. You can be a beginner and you can, you can get a lot out of it. You can be selling for a while. Or what I want to say is you can be like Quint Lears because you are a master salesperson. And that, that's what's not explained sometimes is, you know, is how do people get to the Quint Lears level of being a master salesperson? I, I sold a bunch of homes, as you know. So everything in the book is authentic. It's stuff that I've used myself, it's tested. And if I learned something at a seminar and I tried, it didn't work, then I, I won't ever teach it a, again. Um, but, but really th this book explains how to get to that mastery level. So if, if you're working away there, uh, you know, in today's market, it's hard because, you know, as we know, we've got a housing boom going on right now. And so your skills could atrophy. So this is a great way to, to get those skills uh, back and, and to get to the quint level. Well, I, that, so I believe, you know, if you don't have a highlighter or notes, but one of the things I wrote down was this part here. It says, okay. I'm going to quote it, no matter what level of experience you currently have by focusing on connecting with clients, selling mm -hmm. with competency, um, with complete integrity and following a proven path that is logical and easy to replicate, you will create the consistent sales success you are looking for, as well as increased referrals. I thought that, I mean, that, that summed up what you just said. And it was, it was one, two, you, three. It was number one, perfect. focus on connecting with others, selling yes. with complete integrity and following a proven path that's Thank logical you. and easy to replicate. T tell me about that. Why, why was that? Cause it, you brought it up in an interview. It's one of the first things that you hit in this book. 
those what, three what, things. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, I just think that, that, that you and I, as, we're, we're proud to be salespeople, right? You, you right can on. agree with that. And you and I also have this sort of chip on our shoulder that we hear salespeople getting knocked sometimes. Maybe it's just us. Maybe we're, it's just how we're, we're wired. Um, and I, I have a lot of respect for, for what we do. It's hard to get up there and get out there on, on weekends and the models and whether it's tough to sell or it's easy to sell. You know, it's hard to be in frontline sales. So the things that define us, the great salespeople, is we can connect with people. I've been around you a lot and I see you connect away you're great at building rapport uh, it's something that, that comes naturally so the first thing is, is to connect with people you got to sell with integrity there's nothing in this book about being pushy if you push this push back so it's about leading people to, through that process and then the, 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 even though there's a lot of pages it is a simple process Everything is designed is, is defined early on in, in the sales path here, whether it's fashionable to have a path or not, you know, here we go again. Um, I, I've certainly le learned a sales path and have followed it so I can replicate it. So I can say, yeah, I'm doing it correctly. Wait a minute. Business has been so good. I didn't have to go out and show anything for six months. I just, there were, there, there were wait lists. And so I didn't, I got out of the habit of model demo. I got out of the habit of narrowing down to one of a kind because I would call four people, make four sales, which isn't, which isn't a slam against anybody. That's just the market we're coming out of or being through and, and, and will come out of. So this will get you back there. This will help you to understand, okay, what are the simple things that work and that you can replicate really at, at will with, with sort of unconscious competence. Does that make sense? I love it. And then, you know, I love it here. It says you, you could be focused and successful while still having fun. Yeah. I hope having fun. You know, we, we were talking about when we're getting a whole thing about motivation and stuff, but how do you stay motivated? And uh, I think, I think success, you know, when you sell something, you're successful, you feel good about yourself. You're, you know, you're providing right. for your family and stuff. Um, uh, staying focused, staying driven, but having fun. So how do you have more fun? Right. Because uh, it is a grind. I mean, it is even can be. Yeah. I mean, you've got appointments up to this. You're, you're, I mean, it, it can be. What advice would you say for long term focus, success and fun? Yeah, I think if, if, if you just focus on your client experience uh, and serving others, you know, we, we can get all wrapped up in, in all the problems that we have. But if you focus on all the positives that, that, that we do have, we are in an amazing industry. So right, right now, the big you know, grind, as you call it, or, or, or the, you know, the problem is that we have so many buyers and we have a shortage of supply and lots of price increases. And, and it's stressful. And, and it's stressful to be frontline sales dealing with clients that have a lot of complaints. But we have to remind ourselves of the abundance of, of what that problem really is all about. It's an abundant problem that we have too many buyers, too few homes and prices going up, uh, you know, as a result of that and other things. So I think we have to remind ourselves of how fortunate we are and, and sort of, and, and be grateful uh, for everything that, that we do. And then take a deep breath and focus on serving others. So serving others in the past might've been getting them to buy the home and move forward. Now it's holding their hand through this stressful time and guiding them uh, and making sure that, that they are there to the end and, and not becoming complacent because, you know, some buyers might not want to stay the whole, the whole course with you. Uh, and then fun and team building and, and being lighthearted. Uh, I don't know if it was you that said this, it's mission versus commission. Is that one of yours? No, it's Ryan Taft. Uh, oh, okay. I, oh, there we go. I heard, I heard mission versus commission. commission. Yeah. And, and it, I think if you're mission focused, uh, and serving others, then, then it works out. If you're only there for a quick buck, then, then it'll come back to, to bite you and the you know what. So there we go. Look, I talk about like liking big butts all the time. And so meaning a big objection because I would buy butt. So right now, um, I'm, I'm, you know, there's a big butt of, of delays and that kind of stuff. So we, we sort of have to embrace those butts don't really embrace a butt because you get arrested for that. But but embrace the <laughs> embrace the time you're in. Be flexible. Go with the change. But have a process that, that you can replicate. That will give you a lot of confidence. I, I got to tell you, I was, um, you, you, I hear you in the voice. We talk about the right words. We are, you know, a, a carpenter uses a hammer and a saw. Um, you know, <laughs> electrician uses wires and cutters, whatever. But salespeople, we have words. Yeah. And I still remember I was talking to you and I said, oh, I've got it. We're releasing a bunch of lots. And you're like, oh, Quint, oh. Please don't. Yeah. Oh, Quint, it's not lots. Yeah, throw it, throw it, hit it. It's a bam. Uh, bam. I break my and, camera. And I, said, I, said, okay. and I felt so, I felt like humiliated because I'm, like, <laughs> I'm talking to this national trainer and, you know, I've got. You're you know, a national trainer too, but thank stuff. you. But, no, I, but I'm just saying like, oh, I just felt like I got caught or whatever. And so to this day, even this morning, you, you popped because I'm texting this, this realtor. Hey, I need to get the plat map on the lot. And I said, oh, the homes, I said home site three different times, you know. <laughs> Uh, but let's talk about the Good words man. and the differences and, and the impact it makes. But what I love is you don't just say, hey, don't use this, use this. You right. go into the why. Why right. should we right. not use 
house. Yeah. Why should we use these words? So uh, talk and break it down. I, I appreciate that. So we, we were talking about the, the sorry, the difference between uh, going to a program, if you will, listening to a speaker and then buying a book. The great thing about the book is it has all the blanks filled in. And so, you know, in a program, I might explain why you shouldn't use the word standard. Uh, you know, because it sounds ordinary and you, you say we include or included luxury feature uh, and you shouldn't say lot because it just sounds negative and it could be confused with a plot or, or a parking lot and, and it should be a home site. And so yeah, in the in the book, we've got probably about 40 or 50 examples of those uh, where, where it's don't say this, say that. Uh, and and it's, it's just easy. And, and look, again, let, let's put it out there. In today's market, it doesn't really matter. I mean, in, in most places in the country, you can say a lot and you'll still get the sale. But at the end of the day, when you put these professional words together, it just defines you as a professional. People are like, wow, I just enjoyed working with her or him. They just seem to have a better vocabulary. They seem to care enough to take time to, to make things sound better. You know, and there are some words that I think uh, are critical in there as well what are you laughing at my friend no no i'm laughing because you know there, there's a thing that says a tactic known is a tactic blown um, oh there we go that, yeah, that makes that, sense that's like yeah it's a common quote but I like one that. of the things is i've had people catch me using words like oh the total investment of your home oh, good and they'll say they'll be like uh that was clever that was clever but there's almost <laughs> like a respect good. they they don't they don't dislike right, it right right let's lighten up and have fun that's okay that they spotted that i mean I I, I I i touch a little bit on personality styles i just touch on it but uh and and they and the, the idea of adapting and mirroring and matching uh, and I learned, I learned that literally back in the 90s. I know some of the people listening or watching this weren't even born back in the 90s. Um, but I learned NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I've adapted ever since. You know, I'll, I'll change my cadence. I'll change my vocabulary. Uh, it's just, it, it's subconscious. I've never been caught once. You know, my whole idea is to connect and create a better experience. So, and if somebody did, it'd be like, okay, so I'm just relaxing like you are. Or I'm just getting more energetic like you are. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, I think, I think it's like they want to like i think there's a perception like oh if the sale came like you did I, you got paid and you didn't really do much or like okay so that fact that you're showing that you're trying isn't important yeah uh, i agree i think it's funny when uh you're, you're right when people but you know the, the, the one i got busted on uh mm -hmm. instead of saying downsizing which is in here i i learned to say right sizing and I sold in an active adult or 55 plus community for almost 10 years. We had over 2000 homes that we sold there. Um, and I, I would say when, when you right size, we'll go oh, right sizing and they would laugh about it. We would discuss it like, yeah, because it's not downsizing. You're not giving up. You're right sizing for this next phase of your life and you can enjoy letting go. And it's, you know, luck and leave or whatever you call it and maintenance free. So, you know, play golf and stuff. But, but those words, are, you know, if, if it's a conversation point, great. You're standing out from the crowd. You're being memorable uh, in a positive way, you know, within integrity uh and that, that's a good thing too we don't want to just blend in uh and and hide you know people should recognize what we're doing so there we go no but fantastic let's talk about you you're famous for you like big butts you like yeah. big, like chunking you've got personalities right. you've got the nlp you've got oh, the right you. words um so i like to say it's simple but not easy and there's a okay. difference between simple and easy and your your, your content is simple but it's not easy that. Okay. Uh, uh, so let's, let's break that down. Let's talk first about like, you know, objections. Let's talk about sure. getting into some sand, chunking. Let's talk about mere, all of it. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, there, there, there are certain things that people come tend to come away from my programs with and already some feedback on the book has been similar. So that that idea of chunking. Uh, in fact, I was on I, I was listening to a podcast this morning and somebody said chunking on there and Builder magazine interviewed us and, and, and loved this Very idea of chunking. Well, Pro builder, excuse me. Um, anyway, the, the idea is the, 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 the way you use it, you chunk things down. So when you're listening to somebody and you've asked a bunch of discovery questions, instead of just moving forward, you'll say, well, if I hear you correctly, uh, Quint, you're looking for a four bedroom. You saw us online, you like the idea of the owner's retreat on the main level. You're looking for a four, three, you're thinking of keeping it in the mid fours and you'd like to move in by next spring. Does that sound about right? So, so what you're doing is you're proving that you're listening. Therefore, you prove that you care, you connect with people. They may correct what they say. Like, oh, did I say four bedrooms? Really four and a den is what we need. Um, and then you're, you're, you also can close them effectively. Because when you find that home, you say, remember earlier you said you wanted this, 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 and this. So that's one of the early things in the book is, is, is to master listening skills. What did I say? I yeah. Know. 
something about listening skills. Okay. Anyway, it's just just kidding. So the idea is to master listening skills and and chunking. I'm I'm a reformed bad listener, you know, in my personal life. Forget about it. But in business, I'm pretty good. I do focus, and chunking is a way to to, to stay there. So that's one. So yeah. far, so good. Great. Yeah. Keep rolling. Yeah. And then the the the, the butt thing is. Uh, how can I put it? I've, I, as, a, as a selling sales director, sales manager, I would meet with my salespeople constantly and we're talking about hot prospects. And sometimes they'd say, well, you know, the, the buyer doesn't have any objections, but then we wouldn't see them again. It's like, that's a little unrealistic in most markets. I mean, yes, I know people have been lining up a little recently. So the idea of, of, of understanding what the buyer's objections are uh, is so important. You know, the, the reason that they have disappeared or are not coming back, or even when you call your wait list, or not everyone's buying on your wait list, right? So they're, 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 they must have an objection. I just think it's a funny thing to call it a butt. I have it on my pens. I like big butts because a big butt, an is an objection a good thing or a bad thing, Mr. Mr. Lears? It's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. Yeah, it's a sign of interest, right? So we actually want to poke the bear a little bit and, and get a response in a positive way and find out what their real objections are. So yeah, there, there's a, a chapter uh, on a, a, under closing. I talk about the uh, the six step process for, for managing objections, managing butts. Uh, and then I think what, what might surprise people is I'm much more of a question guy than an answer guy. Uh, I don't believe in giving rote answers to objections. I want you to question and find out what, what their why is. What, why do they have that objection? What's really holding them back? So I put a lot more onus on open-ended discovery at the beginning and really understanding people's needs, seeking first to understand. And then and with objections, I focus a lot more on the question part than the answer. The answers will come, and there are techniques that, that will make your answer a lot more credible and, and, and effective. But really, are you brave enough to find out what it is about that that concerns? Or what is it about the view? Or how much too high? Or why do they want to wait or not wait or, or whatever? And then you can present a solution. But you got to get there with the, with, with the why first. Would you agree, sir? I agree. And, and <laughs> let's talk about empathy versus sympathy. I mean, you got yeah. different yeah. emotional differences. Why, why is understanding those differences important and how would that affect? Amazing same? question. Yeah, no. And, and I think as, as a natural D and I or ID, whatever we, we might be, um, empathy, we, we, we're kind people, don't get me wrong, but empathy is not something that's natural to a lot of us. But when I hear somebody has a problem, I want to jump in and fix it immediately. Well, that's not it. That's not being empathetic. You know, we have to listen and let them explain themselves fully. So there's a quote in the book that uh, empathy is putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Uh, 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 excuse me. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me get this right. Wow. Uh, sympathy is putting else, itself in somebody else's shoes. Empathy is filling the pitch. We should cut this out. I got that wrong, I think. I, I got to check that. So long. Empathy is putting yourself in somebody's shoes. Yeah, there we go. Take two. Wow. Empathy is putting yourself in somebody's shoes. Sympathy is filling the pinch. So if you agree with them that there's a problem, then you're being sympathetic and that's lapsing too far. What you yeah, want to do is be empathetic. Sorry. No, we're not going to cut that out. And the reason why is because even all of us need to continue to be learning and record. You know, we, we, we come up with right, an idea. Cool. I, I get panicky. Like sometimes I lose sleep. Like I've got to write this idea down <laughs> um, and to constantly be studying and restudying yeah. to be a constant student of, of, of sales and, and learning. Remember, um, actually let's, let's break down the retreat, the, the tropical yes. sales retreat. Yes, sir. And I've never we had were... this happen. I, I, you know, <clears throat> we went and I had like, I built up to this main point and I could not remember the main point. I remember. Yeah. Well, I remember vaguely. I, I don't say well, I remember. Anyway, and, and so what I remember, uh, what ended up happening was afterwards, people said, you know, that meant so much to me because we all can relate with. Yeah. What's the, what's the warranty on this dishwasher? It's like, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, so we're, there, right, we suddenly uh, forget things. It's a very yeah. complex process and it's always changing. That's what I'm finding is like, the market's changing, the buyer's changing, the economy's changing, the interest rate's changing, they've changed the appliance package, the energy package is changing. Right. Uh, which is one of the great things about, I think, new home sales that we're in this in this career. So the yeah, brand- Yeah, things are evolving. I think right. this is one of the best tips, using the the brands of the appliances, you know, like right. hey, Maytag Gourmet Kitchen. Or, yeah. let, let, let's talk about the, versus, hey, here's the kitchen. You know, yes. like, we, yeah. we talk about the windshield wiper technique. Here's the kitchen, here's the dining yeah. room, here's the living room. Um, but you talk about naming the brands and yeah. talk about that. 
Well, you're the best at it, honestly. I, I've seen you at the uh, sales rally. I think it was when you did that, uh, that, 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 that demonstration of the dishwasher. And I was thrilled because you're absolutely right. We, we tend to get very complacent. I mean, most salespeople won't say this is the kitchen. You know, if you do take a wet noodle, slap yourself across the face very hard because your buyers knew that it was a, it, it was a kitchen. But we still might say this is a dishwasher. Uh, it's a good dishwasher. We might say this is a, a range and it's self-cleaning. But that, that's not adequate. That's not enough to really get people excited. We, 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 we do become complacent about things. So the brand name is a beginning point. Why? Because those companies have spent hundreds of million dollars branding themselves, right? You know, whether it's GE or Frigidaire or Whirlpool. Um, I, I get into, I get into, I get very granular, which can bore some people. And for that, I will apologize, but I care passionately about it. For example, when, when, when we do model demo on site, we'll go up to the wall. I always pick out of that's a window, pick out a spot and we'll say, this is Sherwin Williams. People love it because, you know, it, it's a it's a high quality paint and it's low VOC. And I would think that, that probably 80 percent of the people I work with organic uh, compound. I learned you that are a star. You, I'm taking I'm eating. taking my apple back. You, 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 you <laughs> redeemed yourself. Volatile organic compounds, which makes it healthier. Is owning a healthy home important to you? No, I want it not healthy. Of course, I want it healthy, but it's a little point. So we, we, in, in every room that you go into, instead of saying this is bedroom three or this is the kitchen, you should learn. You have some product knowledge that gets you in there. Share a feature. You know, it's 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 easy to maintain. It's, it's low voice. Give a benefit so it's healthy for your family. And then my my, my formula in the book is FBI feature benefit involvement, and then check in with them and find out how they feel about what you just said, which I think is what I think I know it's what you do. It's what master salespeople do is they're constantly checking in. You know, there's different examples in the book. And I learned this again a long time ago uh, and couldn't believe the, the, the difference in my sales. But from the beginning, you know, how does this look? How does this feel? Which would you prefer between this and this? Closing out spaces, you know, so closing out the great room, uh, the kitchen area, the, the, the backyard, if you're selling in a, in a community, you know, you close as you go. And then in the end, the closing is just a simple recapping of all the agreements, all the yeses you got in your yes bank, basically. So it, it's so easy if you keep it simple. You said it's simple, but not easy. Is that what you said? Simple, but not easy. I, I got to borrow that for you. Can I, is that your quote? Because I'll put it in my next book. Put it in the next book. I love it. Simple but not easy. Yeah, the best process. You know, so I'm so sorry. sorry. No, it's it, it it's uh that there's a big distinction. You know, sympathy versus empathy. These fine lines. Right. Um, I have a quote about that. Yeah, yeah. No, I love <laughs> quotes. Quotes are, I think, uh, like little little pack. Like it's like a little gift. It's like uh, right. one of my favorite quotes is humility, and this is from C.S. Lewis. Is not oh, thinking. Well, C.S. Lewis, yeah. Is not think humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. And, wow. you know, so many salespeople, myself included, you know, they come across as cocky or this guy's arrogant, but that always, <clears throat> you know, if I'm always thinking about myself, but if I focus right. on, yeah. I mean, and actually doing these interviews, like I think a shift happened when I was, it wasn't like, oh, this is Quentin Lears of New Home Sales. And I'm like, and I'm really thinking about rolling. Right. You and your tie and your, right. <clears throat> Yeah, like, do I look okay? Do I have a calic? I did like 20 interviews with this stupid calic, bad, bad. And I was like, <laughs> what about me? Nobody cares about me. Anyway, so I would just encourage um, salespeople, as you learn the techniques that Roland's teaching in his book, it, I think there's a, a sense of like getting out of yourself. Yeah, right? absolutely. Getting out of self, focusing not on the, right. on the commission, but on the customer's mission. I, I think you're not going to go wrong with, um, you know, focusing on their needs, wants, desires, not... You know, yeah. what do I have well, next or my phone or um, mm -hmm. anyway, I think, I think you've got some. No, I, I, that, that C.S. Lewis quote actually actually gave me good goosebumps about being about being humble and not focusing on yourself. And, and it, it's true. I think when you're younger, you think the world really cares about you and not, not, not to be harsh or anything, <laughs> but they're, they're, people are self-absorbed that we, 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 you know, I, I talk about it in the book, be interested, not interesting. So be interested in them. So when, when they want a four bedroom, well, why, you know, it's not just a four bedroom at 20, 250 square feet. Who's going to be enjoying that home with your old kids and what are their names and what do they like to do? And, and what are their hobbies? And, you know, you, you can go as deep as, as, as the client will allow you and, Part of that, of course, is, is their personality style, you know, how far you want to go, but it's being interested and really caring about them. And that covers up this, this, this th thought of, of, of being perfect, you know, um, like the whole idea of chunking, by the way, sorry to come back to that so often, but, but if, if, if you make a mistake, if you have the process to get your hand out, quite literally, how you heard about us, when, whatever, but let's say I get to the value range, you know, Quinn, I don't remember how much again were you thinking of investing? It's okay that I made a mistake that I'm not perfect. Well, did you say spring or summer you want to get in by? Okay. 
well you know it's okay to, to be less than perfect as long as you have a process that shows that you're trying to serve the customers and you care about them enough to not just plunder on with some terrible sales pitch some can canned presentation but you're questioning and learning and involving uh, and i'd take that all day long over over you know perfect product knowledge but knowledge is important but involving and connecting trumps that all day long sorry to interrupt so by the way by the way yeah by the way I'm going to share, let me share one of my techniques. How to I get a word in sideways for you. ADD. It's not as good as FBI, but I call it. Oh, okay. ADD. No, okay. Yeah. I call it attention deficit dinero. And, dinero. Uh, okay. There we go. Money, right. And so. I think, yeah. I have ADD. So I, I want to get your, this. I want to get your feedback. So basically if somebody comes in, we ask questions, right? Now, yeah. some, I, I hate to quote buyers are liars. It's just because. That's it's not true. Matters. Yeah. They're just confused. They're not concentrating. Right. No, and, and, and by the way, so buyers are scared. So, you know, their mom says, hey, you tell them you're only qualified to 300, not a penny over, right? <laughs> right, right. So sometimes by going back, I'm just adding to your thing where you used to go back. Please, to, yeah. I can't remember, no. What was your goal for how much you wanted to invest? And you didn't say spend. I catch right. those words. You say, how much do you want to invest? Absolutely. And sometimes people will change that. Yes. Yeah, because exactly. They, uh, yeah. Like, well, I mean, we can actually go to more. You know, we told you. Th right. But if you. If you say, "Hey, I remember that you were quality, you know, three hundred, um, then they feel like they can't buy because they have to." Yeah, well, you're locking in at a certain number, which is just a number they came they up with. They lock themselves in because of a. Um, yeah. Well, I think when, when, once you have empathy, real empathy, you understand how we humans are wired. Now, there are four distinct, but well, four personalities as I teach. You, you, you teach Enneagram, which is much more advanced. Well, that's, a, that's a brilliant thing. Right. That, Right. So, so understanding that, that we're not perfect, that when you said, you know, our homes are valued, I don't know, from three to 550 ish, what, what did you have in mind? And they, they come up with 300. Well, maybe they weren't really concentrated. Maybe they were afraid to say 350 or four because they thought you were going to sell them up. So understanding that, that it's what they don't say and it's body language and how they react and really developing what, you know, I call closing radar in the book and empathy. Um, Malcolm, excuse me, Malcolm Gladwell in the book Blink, he, he calls us um, mind readers. And, and it's not mind reading, it's paying attention to what's really going on. It's like being quiet and, and looking at the hidden language and how they really feel about things. Uh, it comes off as mind reading because we have this, this alarming empathy, if you will, where we really understand, for the most part, if we're in a good mood and, and working and focused, then uh, it's, it's just very powerful to, uh, you know, to give people the freedom to be themselves and make mistakes. And as long as you have a process to keep moving them forward and involving them, we'll, we'll get to the same finish line. You, you have the fundamentals of new home sales, you know, yes, the, the, the opening, the objections, the, the buts, getting, you know, going back to the understanding the correct language and words to use. You break down the four personality styles and how to effectively sell to each. You get into the NLP, uh, the neuro bit, yeah. programming, how to um, uh, differentiate between somebody who's an audible learning or visual learning or kinesthetic. So, I mean, you go deep into this. What going through this and getting it down is that feeling uh, a success? Is it a, a catharsis? What, what has been the and what's the reaction from other people? And lastly, yeah. let's talk about because I know you've got a great team. Let's talk about the unsung heroes that have helped you. Including uh. Uh, I could have Max. Yeah, Max has mentioned that's my son. You know, we, we're similar. We, I think most people worship their kids at this point. But yeah, Max has always been there. And, and my, my, my wife has is, is always been very supportive. But, oh, I wouldn't say overly supportive, but if I, it was like, when is this book coming out? You know, she, she is from Ukraine. So uh, it goes through a tough time right now. But she's got that strong accent. And she's very been very good at pushing me and sort of saying, when is it coming out? Yeah, I'm tired of you telling me that. And stuff. But yeah, I, I spent the last year in editing. I had a wonderful editor, Sandra Jervis. Uh, who really just typos and and uh, and grammar? So I wanted to keep my my British humor in there. You know, I think one of the things that I didn't say really, it is a sales book. It, it's processes, systems uh, that you can replicate. But I do have an odd British sense of humor, clearly. Um, and so that I wanted to keep that voice in there. That, that that you have these surprising little jokes. I hope you can tell that they're supposed to be funny uh, throughout there, which is a little bit different. So uh, yeah, that that team. Um, uh, it's, yeah. With, it's, it's got great humor. It's got quotes. It's got. Yeah. I know we're talking, we can't motivate people. But it's, it's got good motivation. No, really, yeah. Uh, I want to talk real quick. Just transition yeah. to your grandfather, who owned Aww. a cashmere um, clothing store, yeah. quite famous one. Tell the story, because I love those or origin stories. Oh, well, thank uh, you so much. Yeah, I, I think that I probably come from a family where selling was was always going on on, on, on my mother's side anyway. So my, my grandfather, his name was was um, Nat Liepman, uh, and he started a cashmere store in 1926 called N. Peel. 
P-E-A-L. Uh, it's in a beautiful part of London in the Burlington Arcade. And he sold sweaters to all the movie stars, uh, Humphrey Bogart, oh, that's very hyperbolic, but many of them, um, Lauren Bacall, Bogart, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Cary Grant was a regular in there. My mother actually met Cary Grant and, and Charlie Chaplin when he was older, bought sweaters. And then he, he became the, um, the official uh, sweater provider for James Bond movies. So every single James Bond, including Daniel Craig, Where's my grandfather's uh, sweaters? My grandfather sold that store many, many years ago in the 70s. Um, but it was always fun to, to, to visit. He was a larger than life character. I, I just absolutely adored him. Uh, he was had a, and a great sense of humor and a great salesman, but just a kind, big hearted fellow. But that, that store inspired me and I always wanted to work there. But unfortunately, he sold it before I, I got the opportunity and, uh, you know, and, and passed away. But it's very inspiring. Max, my son, uh, just, just, just loves it. We went to the store in London about four years ago, and I said that I'm Nat Peel's grandson, and the whole store came over and they took pictures with us and everything. It was, it's very charming. So it's a great legacy, you know, and I think that's what we're doing is providing a legacy. You, you, anybody out there selling a home to somebody, you might not realize it, but that, that's a legacy, baby. I mean, that's something that they're, they're going to look back on you as a person that hopefully positively impacted their life and, and, and got them their dream home in a very tough time. So, you know, I think it's all about what, what you're leaving behind and, and the power of a good, uh, and, you know, integrity and a legacy that, that matters and caring about, uh, you know, what people are going to say about you when, when it's all over. It's like, well, you know, that Roland, he was a good guy and I had good stuff and, and he was kind and I learned a lot and Quint's amazing and the same exact things I say about you and the same thing about the salespeople. It's, it's like, yeah, she was patient. Everybody else was panicking and my salesperson guided me and took me by the hand and made it a great experience. And uh, I'll be eternally grateful. And that's what else can we ask for, my friend? Well, man, <clears throat> uh, I, I think you should aspire to inspire. And I think you do that every day. Oh, you're um, you know, you've had a big impact. I remember when I was just a young new home salesperson trying to make it through the yes. highs and lows and ups and downs of this market. Um, and then I went to the sales rally and I sat in there and you got up there. Yeah, and then yeah. who is this guy making jokes about throwing stuff around and balls and making... <laughs> butt jokes and yeah swords uh, and weird things yeah yeah very corny uh very, very corny yeah jokes very corny but it's <laughs> uh, stuff that you, it's, it's memorable and it sticks and i think that, yeah. that it's, it's so easy just to like what was that technique but when you say oh. you know, chunking it's like you can't forget that but look man i've been I, here now i just looked at the back look at this look you're this. on the back yeah oh no, go ahead you. look look at the picture of you okay oh, like, look we we Oh yeah, I think we have the same I'm tie. Exactly. Yeah, we. we, we I mean, I, I get who's copying who here? Subconscious thing. I didn't even no, realize. That. No, no. I, I just want to say, if I may, to the world out there listening, whoever is watching this, Quint's amazing. I, he was in the front row for I don't know four or five years. There was a spell yeah. in the in the mid two thousands where I did I think four or five sales rallies, and then back then they had this. Um, management rally and you're always in the second or third row to be fair and you're always taking notes you're always coming up asking questions and I thought this dude is is getting it it's amazing and, and have a look at what happened you're just uh, setting the world on fire and and you're making a difference which is which is incredible man well and then like or just I'm one starting to cry now. <laughs> when, when you when you when you're going the extra mile don't forget to give the extra smile I see you doing that so I want to talk we got a couple minutes I know you got to yeah. be NHB coming up. I have um, a meeting here with an SMC. I'm excited. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, you, and you I got my sales and marketing council. You're right. traveling the road. You're coming to Las Cruces to Albuquerque to come. I will. We're gonna get you on the the circuit with the new book. Um, but uh, tropical sales retreat. Let's take a minute. Oh. And I want to tell you that the the one downside, if I can tell you, of the retreat. Man, I it was so much fun. I had food. I, I the food was so good. You can't not overeat because it's fresh fruit and diced seafood and and it was it was just like i felt I like I was a five-star yeah. resort <laughs> so i wanted to fall asleep in the back i wanted to lay on the beach and then but it had good content the chair massages so you it, couldn't it, fall asleep it was, music. Think, yeah chair massages uh i think it was one of the finest retreats and i went there all business yeah. you know i'm in my suit and stuff next thing i'm getting a back massage next thing i'm having i'm on the beach next thing i'm doing yoga you're great at yoga oh, better me. than me you had you helped me to get out of not my shell but out of the, the redundancy oh. of the add and i i feel like it was a great time and 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 it slowed things down i want to endorse not only the book i'm proud to endorse the book i'm on the back of the book and thank you for doing that's an honor but i want to endorse your 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 next program coming up because you need there's two things we talk about burnout but there's also yeah. rust out people okay. are bored and they're overworked they need to recharge yeah um, i don't think there's a better retreat out there for a new home sales and management mm -hmm. professionals 
So you have my full endorsement. Let plug that. Let's talk about your. Yeah, upcoming. sure. I I really appreciate that. So I, I had this idea. Uh, I wanted to do it for a while, but but Doc, in the middle of COVID, I thought we're all burnt out uh, or this rust out. I love that that phrase. Uh, everyone's working hard. Sales are being made, but people are getting exhausted. They're so stressed. So why not why not create a retreat that has great education? There's you, me, and we've got twelve other trainers in, in all different mediums. Um, but but let's put it on the beach and let's make it fun. Let's make it a, a, a excuse me a reward for all the hard work that people are going through. And and it worked. It was really the, the first one we did uh, in in Hollywood. Hollywood Beach. We're doing one now in, in November, November 2nd through the 4th. It's going to be in, in Clearwater Beach, which is you fly into Tampa. Uh, Pro Builder, uh, the Pro Builder magazine have been helping us a lot now to ramp it up and make it even bigger. Uh, and so it's going to be sales with you and me. We're going to have online sales counselors. We have a, a well-known uh, national online sales counseling training portion going on at the same time. And then we have sales management, leadership and marketing. It's over, over three days. But the idea is come and relax. Bring your whole team down there. You literally wake up on the beach. Meals are on the beach. Yoga on the beach. Sunrise, sunset party on the beach uh, with sand between your toes. Uh, and come early, stay late if you can. So it's not just the three days. But but I really, I believe in spoiling people. I, I, I feel like I'm a good host. When you come to my house, people always have a good time. It's all about relaxation. So there's fun, there's games, there's music, and there's great content up to date relative relative to today's market. We're, we're not writing material until September, October for the November program because you want to update it and make sure it's relevant for today. So, and, and you're a big part of it, my friend. But it's, and it's not only just the trainers, it's the, the pros that are there. These are some top ex sales executives, new home sales. Yeah. And there's kind of a synergistic feel. I know you're, you're going to your next meeting. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Listen, I'm getting dinged. My phone is dinging. So there, that's, there's that's something a lot of people don't know about you. And I think this is one of your secrets. Uh -oh. You're actually a screenwriter, you know, yeah. you your, your whole screenplays. And I think that's your secret because, you know, going to the retreat, you know, the lighting was good. The oh, music was good. The food was good. The massage, you thought of everything yeah. and you kind of have a, and a lot of people don't have this. I don't think I have it. It's just the absolute big picture. And I you try. See, it's true. It's um, absolutely let's true. Talk about that. Let me, I just want to, uh, Wow. Then, yeah. We can talk all day. Let's let's take a break. Come back in an hour. And we'll we'll just do part two, three, and four. Yeah. And the we'll coffee all day. We're, we're, we're gonna start speeding up. But no, I just want to. I, I just think that that is. Yeah. Observing you over the years, and I think that, you know, music from a music standpoint, from a, um, from an actor, you you just have kind of a smooth operator thing that you it's uh, good no well i appreciate this i mean i actually love sade we saw it in concert years ago so that's a good reference but but i do care about the details probably too much you know uh, I'll, I'll i'll stress over stuff that maybe nobody else really cares about but i was standing in the back of the room and i wanted the visuals to be perfect we have music intros and outros i'm, I'm i think i might get a dj next time i love i love the liveliness of music and and you know we had my wife who was a singer come in and, and get her on their feet and it's still like being at a baseball game or at wrigley field or something <laughs> I want you to have fun and relax. And I think people said the day flew, the days flew by, um, yeah. but it was fun. But but we did work hard on that chair massages at, at the breaks and oh, really I, good I, healthy I, food I, that, that people liked. And you know, so it's it's just a, it's a good time. And that's back to fun. We we we're very privileged. We're very very. Uh, entitled a little bit we're, we should be very grateful to be in the, the world's everybody wants to sell new homes i mean whatever you're selling you're aspiring to doing what we do which is sell new homes and we're selling so many of them we have backlogs and shortages etc it's stressful but we should be grateful so come and relax with your team bringing the sales people osc sales managers owners marketing uh, uh interior design bring, bring them all design studio and have fun on the beach just make it into a big party and there'll be some good education in the middle of all that fun you know Grant Cardone says, think in terms of all and everything. And I think that you did that. You know, people are having oh, fun, kind. refreshing, they're learning. So, all right, you're a good man. Thank you. Get the book, Master of New Homes. It's available on Amazon, by the way. I, I will be selling my website. If you want to sign one, then please email me. But and up until that point, Amazon works just fine. You can hey, get a bunch get of them. Get your signed copy, wait the extra little bit of time. Um, okay. Follow Roland on newhomesalesplus.com. Sign up for that retreat. I hope to see everybody there. Any last words? Any any uh, final yeah. thoughts? I wish I was recording this. I just realized I forgot to oh, press record. Yeah. No, I'm joking. I pressed record. I've done that before. <laughs> uh, no, just just uh, be humble. Stay stay humble. Be successful. Stay humble. I, I like that C.S. Lewis quote. That's going to stay in my yeah. brain at least overnight. Well, That's a good one. Thinking less of yourself. It's thinking yeah. of yourself less.
Yeah, I mean, we are important. We need to love ourselves, but serving others and thinking about that total experience, it's an amazing law of attraction, right? It'll come back a lot more than being selfish and, and uh, pushing and being greedy. So, uh, you know, think of, think of the importance you're having, whether you're a salesperson, a manager, whatever your role, you know, the design studio people, my goodness, uh, all of it fits together so, so well to serve others and create an amazing experience. So we should be grateful. Well, man, I'm grateful for you and uh, proud to endorse your book and, and uh, call your friend. Best of luck with, with Max is amazing and the new, uh, all his endeavors, his new YouTube you. channel. And it's cool to see yeah. the, the spark of entrepreneurship, salesmanship, professionalism, you know, uh, entering into his life. Wish everybody the best. Uh, newhomesales.com, proud to feature Roland Narnsey with the new book, Mastery of Selling New Homes. Get Thank it you so much. Uh, all right. You.